Welcome back to the Pro Series Podcast. This is episode 96, and we have sister duo Kirsten and Lindsay from HGTV's Renovation 911, which you can stream now on Max Season 1. We talk about their uh, renovation company and how it all came about, their little backgrounds. That one of them actually worked in the corporate world, came back to this family company that they own, and we talk about their home company called Practical Home. Um, they were just, they have some awesome stories about past clients and situations that they've been in. It's such a cool concept. Their show is such a cool concept. So definitely go stream it on Max now. But I hope you enjoy episode 96 with Lindsay and Kirsten from HGTV's Renovation 911. Lindsay and Kirsten, thank you so much for hopping on the Pro Series podcast today. I'm so excited to talk to you guys about your show and all your companies and just get to know you a little bit. Thank you very much for having us. We're really excited, really excited to talk to you. Yeah, let's, let's, um, are you, so HGTV, um, rest, restoration nine, or renovation 911, um, mm -hmm. just talk about your restoration off camera. That's what I got that on the brain. <laughs> Let's, we're going to get into that, but I want to start in the very, very beginning. Um, where it all started. Did you guys grow up, always wanted to help people in the design community, restoration community? Where did that all stem from? Well, we grew up uh, basically following our dad around to job sites. So our dad was the first employee for Ungerman Construction and yeah. It was a very small family owned business and they responded to emergencies. So, you know, back in the day when it was landlines and beepers and uh, we, you know, our phones started ringing at 545 AM and probably didn't stop ringing until 10 o'clock at night. That was like our dad's world. So it was, yeah. I'll it never forget. We had um, a landline. We didn't have call waiting. So for those of you who even, I mean, some of you don't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> call waiting, but we didn't have call waiting. And my dad's in the emergency business. And we were on the phone one day for like maybe an hour and uh, someone was trying to get through. Yeah. Needless to say, um, the next day we got call waiting. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's a stressful business to be in too. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, I mean, it's a lot. Like, our clients are like very stressed out. You know, mm. your home is your sanctuary. It's where you, you know, kind of <laughs> go to unwind, live, enjoy your family's there. I mean, your home is everything. So when it's uh, by lightning or you have a kitchen fire or your basement floods or a car runs into the front of your house, I mean, it just turns your whole world upside down. So yeah. really, I mean, we've been going to those types of jobs since we were little, Um, you know, it was Saturday, it was Sunday, it was at night. Um, there'd be, Chris and I would be at a dance competition and our dad would be like, girls, I gotta go. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it's just something that we've been a part of for a really long time. Okay. Yeah, then I, um, I decided to start working for my dad in high school and college summers. So I did demo and paint work. Um, mm -hmm. The, yeah, so I'm Kirsten and I, the guys, I'll never forget, they started me in closets because, you know, you can't really screw up a closet when you're painting. Um, and I was also small. So they're like, yep, go paint that closet. So, um, yeah, I did that in my summers. And right out of college, we both went to Madison. Lindsay went the corporate route. And I went and worked for my dad full time right out of college. So yeah. I did not do, this is Lindsay, I did not do demo and painting. Um, I was a summer nanny and then, um, yeah, got a few corporate, uh, internships during college and went and worked for target corporation, um, for okay. my first, uh, 11 years, um, out of college. Okay. So in the back of your mind, when you went into the corporate world, did you always think you were going to end up doing the same thing as your family or was it, did, was there like a, uh, not in not in a million years. Not in a million oh, years. Oh, really? She's like, she's like, you can do that, Kirsten. I'm doing this. Like, we were on very different life paths. Yes. <laughs> How'd that change then? Yeah. Um, so uh, our dad, um, the general manager, was put in like her three-month notice um, to retire. Mm. And um, we were on a family vacation. And my dad just kind of shared that 
uh, she's retiring and I don't know what we're going to do. And we've interviewed a few candidates and they just haven't been great. And, you know, that was in casual conversation. Uh, we're not afraid to talk about work outside of um, work. So, you know, I, I racked my brain, maybe thought maybe I would know someone, you know, from my past in the the target world. Um, and then I don't know what about a month and a half later, I was like, what about me? Maybe I need a change. Um, I had since moved into a different position at target. Um, I wasn't like, I'm going to call it drinking the Kool-Aid. So target's got just a phenomenal culture. Um, but you know, this job didn't necessarily leverage my strengths, this new job that I was in at target. So I, um, I was like, maybe I should look into it more. So yeah. And she's selling herself a little short here. She like ran stores. So, I mean, we're talking what, Correct. what was the highest, like, like big stores, multi-million dollar, hundreds of millions of dollar stores. So she's yeah. used to running a team and, you know, hiring, firing all that jazz. And that is not my specialty. So <laughs> I like my customers and I like picking out paint and I like solving problems on site. So it was, um, I did. I tried to stay out of the conversation because it was like too good to be true to have her come to Ungerman. Um, and she made the decision, her and my dad really, um, figured it out together and she joined the team. That's really good. I've, I've talked to many, um, siblings that, um, are in business together and they always do the like opposites of, so they're not, yeah. none of them are still doing the design. And I'm like, I don't know how anybody could be doing two of the same things at the same time and be related. It's just, it's just crazy. Like two designers or two business people, like I feel like you'd be butting your heads, but you guys are in two different paths, which is really nice. It's kind of why we work. I mean, <laughs> if we were doing the same thing, we would just be at each other's throats. Um, we have different strengths. We have different weaknesses. We really pick up where the other you know, we're like an old married couple. <laughs> we, um, we, um, we, we actually, uh, shared a room our entire life. life, um, have like, didn't fight growing up. So I think it just kind of laid the foundation for, yeah, yeah. you know, us to run a, yeah, yeah, run a business successfully. Um, so yeah, in 2017, we bought our dad's portion of the business out from him. Okay. Um, he stayed on board for a few years until really probably COVID hit. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it was a, it was a really nice transition. Um, I knew after three years of working, um, in the family business that this is something I, I want to do forever. Um, and I wanted to make, you know, that transition and from manager to owner. Oh yeah. And it was probably great to have that corporate experience in the back of your brain just because you probably had to do that to get to where you are right now. Mindset wise, professionally, just all aspects of life. You probably had to do that. Yeah. I never look back. Mm -hmm. So with restoration, like we said before, it's very, very stressful because, you know, it could be a flood in the house, whatever. And, you know, I don't deal with restoration. I just did interior design for maybe someone's doing new kitchen. So they're saving up for this. You're not planning for, did it freeze? We've lost you for a second. Oh. So oh, you're back? Oh, oh gosh. No. We got you for a second. You're back. We can see you. Okay, that was so weird. I tried to put on my personal hotspot because I don't. Oh. There we go. Okay. Well, next, I'll edit that out. <laughs> we just edit that right out. Yes, edit never that. happened. Yeah, it never happened. Race. Um. So what? Re um. Restoration. So me being an interior designer, I go into a kitchen or bathroom project, and they're saving up for this. When you guys are doing this, mm. not, you I mean, you're obviously dealing with insurance and stuff, but they're not, this is something that comes out of the blue. How do you mm. 
go about that with the designing of it and then the the mindset of the client because you're the mindset of your client is completely different than mine. So what advice do you have right. and what have you learned along the way? Yeah, I mean, Chris and I have two pretty different roles, right? So um, this Lindsay, uh, my role is um, just really working through that first response, the emergency, um, kind of accepting that this has happened. Um, in a remodel, you save, you mentally prepare. I mean, you may not fully mentally prepare, but at least you know this is like your home's going to um, go through some sort of you know transition, whereas our clients, they're not expecting this transition. So um, there is you know just this big mental piece. Um, so just what, you know, ensuring, reassuring them that it's gonna be okay. Um, we're here to help. Uh, and then uh, really getting that insurance claim settled so that we can move forward. And insurance only covers from a design standpoint, like for like. So if they had laminate countertops, all we have money for is laminate countertops. So, um, but that's where really Kirsten comes in. Yeah. And then I get to work with them on if they don't want laminate countertops, but they want to put more money in, then we talk about all of their hopes and dreams once they've accepted this situation is happening and we're going to help them through it. Uh, then we get to start doing the fun stuff and yeah, picking stuff out. Um, and I mean, you know, all about that. There's endless options. There's, you know, there's high end, low end, but it's nice that insurance gives us a starting point in budget. And then people can decide if they want to go with that budget or if they want to spend more or even spend less sometimes. Oh yeah. Having that budget and that starting point is awesome because dealing with money, no one wants to talk about money, especially when you're trying to sell something to you just, it's so hard to talk to them about money and it's hard to bring it yes. up as well. It's a touchy subject. Yes. Well, yeah. And this is a really good opportunity for clients to be able to make some changes. So a lot of times we get clients once they've kind of gotten through, you know, that mental process is like, I've been thinking about doing this for a long time. Yes. Um, or I've been thinking about maybe updating this bathroom, you know, that had water damage. So um, this, this kind of um, expedites yes. that thought process that they had. Yeah. yeah the peninsula in their kitchen, they always hated. They're like, do I have to go back with it? We're like, absolutely not. Let's just do an island. You know, it's, it turns into a silver lining, but it does take time to get them to that silver lining. Yeah. So when did this, the TV show come about? Like when did that all start up? Four years ago. Years ago. Yes. So really? not something we sought out or anything we thought we'd ever do. Um, it's not something we applied for or like, oh, how do we get on TV? Nothing like that. Um, I, my best friend lived in LA and she happened to be on a TV show, uh, HGTV show. She okay. got to be friends with the producer of that show. And then she just stayed in touch with that, with that producer. This producer happened to find uh, Chip and Joanna and the Property ben. Brothers and Ben and Aaron from hometown. So she knows talent. And yeah. so um, my friend moved back to Minnesota. She bought a bit of a fixer upper to say the least. It had water damage on it. She reached out to this producer one more time. She's like, my best friend and her sister are going to fix my house. I've been telling you about them for years. And uh, she goes, okay, have them film them on their cell phones. Send me some footage. I'll see what like they have to offer. And we did that for like a year. And then we just kept we got presented to a production company. We got a sizzle. We got a sizzle reel. We got a pilot. And, and then we then got an eight episode series. Series, a whole season. So it's been a wild ride. Yeah, starting, I've never heard, I've heard a lot of these origin stories of the shows, but I've never heard that someone started at like recording it on their phone. Like you made your own show, For like a year. A year. And then we had like a shared drive, a shared Google drive, and we just do all these random clips. We'd be on a roof and like our husband would come and um, my husband would film us. And then her husband would show up at a basement flood and he'd film us. And then, you know, our colleagues were filming us. It was, it was, it was bizarre. It was bizarre. That is. <laughs> During that process. Then, of... Oh, go ahead. 
I was just going to say, and then our production company just edited it. Um, edited all of our different scenarios together and they loved that we're different than a traditional HGTV show because it's not someone coming with all this money in an ugly house our customers are in serious need of help you know they have they have a hole in their roof or they have um you know no ceiling. No, yeah, they their house is burned up. I mean, our clients just need help. So it was a different take on an HGTV show. Oh, 100%. That's one of the reasons why I reached out because it was so drastically different. Not just you guys are personality-wise are so different than most shows, um, <laughs> which is awesome. It froze again. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's probably a great compliment for you guys to know that you're in such great company with, you know, you said Chip and Joe and Ben and Aaron and stuff. Like, how does that make you guys feel that that same production company believed in you guys? I mean, it, we have felt so taken care of in a world that we don't know. Yeah. And in an industry that we never plan to be a part of. And so we've, we've felt just love and um like just generosity and support support and they're uh, they're a women-owned production company which like their moms uh we have so much that we can relate to them on so we've been in such good hands from from day one yeah we've had amazing support from the production company hgtv even our mm -hmm. network exec has been um absolutely phenomenal mm -hmm. um and for me i I love learning a new business, right? Um, and so this has just been so fascinating just to see like how you build a production team and um, you know, what goes into making a show and a reality TV show. So um it's been really, really cool to learn. Absolutely. So where can people watch the show? Is it it's on Discovery Plus right now, or is it did it switch over to HBO Max or whatever it's turning into? It sure did. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's on both. It's on Discovery Plus and and Max right now. Okay. Yep. Is that? So, yeah, we have. Uh, combining? Are they combining? Is what? it just me Max? It's Max now. Yes, okay. I think like we're talking with two different subscriptions. So Discovery Plus, they still have yep. um, subscription based. Max, they have, which is also subscription based. But uh, the beauty of that is obviously they're both owned owned by Warner Brothers Discovery. And you can view Renovation 911 on either streaming platform. Mm -hmm. um, and we have eight one-hour episodes that follow us along. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about the show. I don't think we talked a little bit. Just give us a little, um, like, a synopsis on how, what the show is all about and what's different about the show. So um, every episode has two emergencies that we respond to. We call them an A story and a B story. So the A story is like the bigger emergency that follows us through from the beginning of the episode to the end and the, the big reveal. Um, in the middle of the episode, we introduce a B story and that is a smaller emergency. So that could just be like um, a one room example, a bathroom. Um, mm -hmm that had major water damage. So it's pretty cool and unique that our show has two stories, two reveals, mm -hmm. um, and their emergency bay. So um, it's kind of fascinating. Oh, yeah. How hard is it to find clients that want to be on TV during that type of situation? Because, you know, that could be a lot of people, you know, they have to clean their house before they have company over and stuff, or they want the camera crew to see, but like, in that particular moment, your house is flooded. It's going to look like a disaster. I feel like that would be kind of hard to find clients that want to be on. So because Lindsay and I uh, own Ungerman Construction, that's just what we do every day. So right. we, ha we have over 500 jobs a year that flow through Ungerman. And okay. so we get to showcase 16 of them on the show. So for us, it's it wasn't a lot of clients. Um, however, we probably presented to our production company, 50 to 60 clients okay. and, um, they did, you know, a casting sort of, um, process, process um, to, uh -huh. to see if, you know, they'd be a good fit for HGTV, if they were okay with us being in their home, um, like all the, all the different questions they would ask them. But the crazy part to that is that, that even 
like, let's say the client was like, sure, I'll learn more about this process for, you know, we would ask our clients that would call us that need help. Would you be interested? And some are like, oh yeah, sure. I'll learn more. And then if the production company turns them down, we still have to do their job. That. Yeah. And so we've made it very clear that, well, the production company made it very clear that this is, it's just not the right fit for the show, but Ungerman is still a great company, You're right? You're in good hands. You're in great hands. It just didn't fit for the show. So they just did a, such a nice job of navigating that, um, the part, like, I mean, that just goes back to the partnerships that we had through this process, um, supported all businesses that we're in. Yeah. And if we're being honest, when we would present, you know, um, for example, we had a family, they had a lightning strike and it, their house was totally to it, terrible fire. So they lost so many things. So when we presented them with like, would you like to maybe be on an HGTV show? It like brought like joy to their family. It brought like excitement in the middle of like you know, horrible, Dark. like horrible yeah. situations. So they were like, sure. So we had that reaction a lot. Like, oh my gosh, that really? would be amazing. This is a horrible situation, but sure. That would be so cool. So it was actually, people were very excited to be a part of it. That's awesome. How hard was it? I mean, doing a show I've heard is like a full-time job in itself, but running a company and having all those other customers that aren't on TV, because you're still trying to keep your reputation of your company alive. How hard is that? So um, we restructured. So I'm the business person, right? This is Lindsay. And um, that was like really important to me. So if we don't have our team, we don't have our business. So we need to make sure that our team felt supported. Um, had the resources they needed. We weren't pulling things away from them to do their job and to complete the other jobs that our business has. So we, um, I had originally like 12 direct reports, like different managers reporting to me. Um, we restructured, so I had five. Um, so it just reduced. So then they felt that they had somebody to go to. Um, yeah. I was available during the filming process. Uh, but I couldn't be available to so many people. So we just reduced that. So then our team felt like the support. We still continued all of our like culture events. So we have a fun committee um, and we do different, you know, events with our team um, every other month just to just really build that community and that culture. And then I just had, unfortunately, less jobs. So I just couldn't be as with, I couldn't be with as many clients as I usually am. So <laughs> I gave a lot more time to the filming, a lot more time to the filming clients um, because that was the nature of the role. And so um, that was the hardest part for me was just not being able to help more people, um, but obviously for a very, very cool experience. Oh, yeah. How long did it take to record the all, all the episodes that are out? Do you really want to know? <laughs> so because our, like our business is unique. So we weren't like full on like every day. Um, so, you know, we, I would say, um, you know, eight, nine months was like our window that we filmed um, because we wouldn't fill jobs would have to come in for us to get the job. So a lot of times in the casting process, you cast all the, all the clients in a, a typical HGTV show in the beginning before you even start, you know, the like production, whereas ours, we have to cast throughout the, the time frame. That makes sense. Cause you can't plan someone getting a flood in their kitchen. Like that's not no. a plan. <laughs> that's right. crazy, crazy always to hear. No, it's no. not production. Company. No, no. Okay. No. We, um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's, it's, our show is just so unique compared to every other. So yeah, you're, we're not filming every day for months and months, but, um, it gets very, very hectic there towards the end when like, we know production's ending. I mean, we were, we were definitely filming all day, every day. <laughs> yeah. Is there going a lot to of time. season two? We don't know yet. Okay. What can um, we do just... to get that moving? Oh my gosh. I wish we knew. I mean, email HGTV, reach out on Twitter, tell watch it. on Max. Yeah. Watch streaming on Max. Um, uh, uh, we, I mean, any support for the show is 
always great. That's all we can ask for. Um, the The good news is all the feedback that we've get that we've gotten is just incredibly positive, and people do love that it's a different spin on a HGTV show. It's not just another remodeling show, which they're. HGTV does it right. Like they know what they're doing. They have a great, you know, plan. Um, and we just felt very lucky to be part of it, but we do have a a different show. So um, yeah. we'll see what happens. Definitely. I'm hoping for a season two. So if watching back or did, did you guys, first off, did you guys watch it back? Because I know a lot of people mm -hmm. don't. Okay. Did you oh yeah, we watched it back. want to change for season two? Oh gosh, not really. No. We um we we, we trust the um the production team. Yeah. yeah. They they know how to really create a great show. Um yeah. I wouldn't say that's not not necessarily our strength. So um god, we're we're really open to uh their suggestions and then we're like, "Okay, let's do it." Yeah, we're we're really up for anything. We have been asked how much of it was scripted? And I mean, none of it. This is us. This is like <laughs> raw, like no, no script. Uh, it's just how we are on job sites. It's how we are in life. And um, yeah, that it's just a really good representation of us, our company and our clients. That's awesome. Well, I'm hoping for season two. I want to end on, um, first off, thank you for taking time out of your day, but I want to end on where people could follow your company um, websites, socials, where they could personally follow your personal accounts, and then um, how they could watch your show one more time. So we respond to thousands of emergencies. And the number one question we get asked from all of our clients is how could we have prevented this? So we started a new business called Practical Home. You can find us on practicalhome.com. Um, follow us on Instagram, Practical Home Official. Follow us on Facebook, Practical Home. Uh, and we're going to give you all the tips and all the tricks so that these emergencies don't happen in your home. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. That's smart. That? Yeah. And then we're both personally on Instagram. I'm at cursed me in K I R S T M E E H A N. And, and yeah, I'm at Lindsay dot Awesome. Well, thank you both so much, everybody go um, stream renovation 911 so they can get us <laughs> to um, and then follow them all on social media and their companies. Thank you so much for both of you guys for hopping on today. Thank you. We appreciate it very much.